Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lee Thompson. Um, I'm the director of cloud integration at Selenia. Um, we're a uh, engineering and design firm for, for cloud, specifically OpenStack. Um, I go all over the world implementing cloud systems, uh, and I'm very generic and unopinionated when it comes to implementations, uh, any vendor. And I started picking up the complexity of the uh, OpenStack toolchain. And I always want to get it right, and it ends up it's a bigger problem than me. So uh, I like to use a community forum like this to start sharing best practices. Um, what I'm trying to target this, this speech to is people trying to deploy clouds. This is not easy. Um, it, it, chasing trunk is, is something that I tip, typically do, which is chasing trunk is when you're trying to use the latest version of OpenStack, the latest config, and everything tends to stay uh, broken. So if you're trying to implement an OpenStack cloud in your company, don't do this, right? You want to stay with a stable configuration, a stable version of OpenStack. Um, OpenStack right now seems to me like what X Windows was back in the 80s. I'm showing my age, obviously. But uh, X Windows, you could do anything with X Windows, and that was awesome. The problem with X Windows is you could do anything. It did not have well defined default configurations. Um, you, when you look at something like OS X, it makes decisions for you and standard configurations and standard use cases get applied. We're still trying to figure that out with OpenStack. Also, what you see going on in the floor behind you in the demo hall is we kind of feel like we're in the Linux distro wars that were going on you know, back in around 2000. There seems that every day you, you run into a new distribution and your company wants to look at it. And this, this makes it very, very, very difficult um, to try to standardize on something like um, you know, OSX type of thing, which typically just works. There's really no one solution. Um, the way we typically been doing this is with a tool chain type of design. This is very standard in the DevOps world. Um, you don't just plop down one solution. You chain up tools together. And then what is a tool chain? Tool chain is a set of programming tools used to create a product. And that's right off Wikipedia. Unix itself is just a collection of tools. I mean, it's one of those jokes that you, know, you go to a party and everyone's laughing at it, you don't really quite get, and that's what I always felt about Unix. It, it took a long time for me to figure out it's really not an operating system, it's just a collection of utilities that work together. Well, OpenStack is kind of like that, right? We've basically taken the big parts of a distributed compute cloud platform and broken them in pieces and implemented them separately and federated them together as a tool chain. Good programmers are lazy. And what lazy means is you don't really want to reinvent the wheel every time. You want to leverage your community. That's the best practice, right? The problem with being lazy is you have to spend a lot of time at it. There's a lot of tools out there. So which ones are good, you know, which ones are bad? You have to use your community to figure it out, right? So to try to figure it out, I spoke at DevOps Days uh, last week. I did an Ignite. Um, has everyone ever done an Ignite session? That's the five-minute speech which is a horrifying format for doing speeches. Um, I did that in Austin, and we had a, a breakout session where we started talking about uh, different approaches to doing cloud solutions uh, with OpenStack, and I brought it out here to Georgia. Now, one thing um, Austin's got going for it is we have F1, right? Top of the breed, racing. Out here, they have something called NASCAR. I never really was into it until, well, last week. Do you guys see this? The Dogecoin guys sponsored a NASCAR. Now I have to watch NASCAR, because that was super, super cool. Uh, the Reddit community uh, generated $55,000 and <laughs> put this on the back of a NASCAR. So they're doing the bumper cam drafting, and there's a dog looking at you. <laughs> Freaking awesome. My daughter asked, uh, Daddy, can we do Dogecoin on an F1 car? Yeah, maybe for one lap. Let's talk about tool chains. Um, this is something that goes back that uh, me and Alex Honor did at a Velocity conference um, a couple years ago, where we started looking at, um, you know, most of the uh, DevOps work, you know, prior to this, it was on provisioning. And what we were saying was there's lots of different tool chains. And you have all these in cloud as well. Um, there's a provisioning tool chain, which is, you know, deploy, config, uh, boot install. 
Um, the classic, you know, continuous integration, continuous deployment, continuous delivery tool chain, which is your, your software development lifecycle. Um, you have your monitoring tool chain, you know, you know, which we have a whole conference on Monorama and then the whole, you know, monitoring still sucks, you know, meme. Um, you know, <laughs> there's a whole tool chain for that. And then there's a control, and this is what I always talk about with control, is you have monitoring. Monitoring is data, it's, it's just raw data. What you really want is control. You want to take inferences off of that data, make correlations and decide things that are in control or out of control, and then have remediation, run book automation to get back in control. If you're talking about monitoring, you're probably talking about the wrong problem. Um, and then model, you know, is where you, you basically look at your distributed systems ontology, the relationship of endpoints in your distributed system. I'm not going to talk about that today because that's kind of beyond the uh, scope. Um, let's go through each one of these areas except for model um, one by one in regards to OpenStack. The provisioning stuff is, is it's probably the worst part of it. It's, it's still, it's, it's got a long way to go, I think. Um, and unfortunately, that's the first thing you want to do if you're doing a private cloud is you want to get it all installed. Um, there's uh, six major ones I keep running into, um, Foreman and Packstack, um, which is typically Red Hat, which in there go into uh, O and Tusker. Um, the Fuel Web, which is uh, from Rantis. Um, the Juju and Fuel Web ones are probably the, the best user interface that I've seen, probably the cleanest install. Um, Crowbar um, does, a, does the uh, provisioning very well in Dell hardware. It looks like uh, Dell is pulling out of that, but they're going to start doing uh, support for more hardware as an open source project. Um, Rackspace private cloud tools. Um, the really cool thing that happened in Hong Kong is uh, Symantec did a old school proof of concept where they grabbed all of these and went through them one by one. And so this is already up on the OpenStack website. And they, they got all the you know, crowbar guys in, they got the fuel web guys in, they installed all these and baked them off for their use case, okay? If you were evaluating these tools for your use case, you would come up with a different result, right? Um, they ended up going with Crowbar, but what was so fantastic about what these guys did is, you know, a lot of us have done proof of concept type work for the corporations we work at, and we spend a lot of time on it, you know, maybe a whole quarter, maybe four months, and the, the result of that gets put into a file, you know, you do some PowerPoint in front of uh, your, your company, and then you file it away, and that's the end of it. These guys brought it out to Hong Kong, shared it with the community, it was just fantastic. Um, if you go back uh, one, one slide, uh, most of these tools are based on, um, you know, Chef or, or uh, Puppet. Uh, the Juju has the charms. Uh, the Triple O, which is newer, uh, is pluggable. It's, it's, it's not opinionated on uh, config management. When you get in the config management side of uh, provisioning, um, it's, you know, it's slippery and wet. There's still some work going on. Um, the Puppet code is getting refactored are re-hosted from uh, uh, Puppet Forge, moved over to Stack Forge. So if you go out there and you start Googling for your Puppet code, you might end up over on the older code. Plus, there's a few branches out there. Um, there was a meeting yesterday, which is great. Uh, there's already a weekly dev status meeting that started uh, about uh, four or five weeks ago. And uh, in the weeks following, we're going to start having uh, weekly uh, dev meetings on it. The goal has to be to get all these branches out of the system and start getting to a community resolved, standard, well-defined config. And that's, that's what we need, I think, as a community. Um, the variation of all the different deployments, my configuration of OpenStack is gonna be different from your configuration, needs to be different from your configuration. So how do we get all this, these different varied configurations merged together with one basically code a piece of code to inject all the different config options. The chef, the chef code was pretty much in the same space about a year ago where the puppet code is now, um, but Matt Ray started uh, getting a hold of this and started community wrangling and uh, getting the uh, code to merge in. So there's less fragmentation on the chef side.
Once you have your um, OpenStack uh, cloud up, one of the first things you want to do is get the machines that you want to host in. So you want to build up some virtual machines. Wow, there are a lot of tools here. And I run into you know, pretty much all of these. Uh, VM Builder, Image Factory, SUSE Studio. Um, the new kit on the block is for machine image builders is uh, out of the Triple O project, uh, Disk Image Builder. Is anyone using that? Not yet? OK. Oh, got one. Um, I've been most successful in you know, the work I've done just using uh, Vagrant with uh, VWE or Packer, and then uh, just you know, running it on my Mac, and then using the VBox clone, VBox managed clone, and then uploading that into OpenStack. I mean, that's just something I've been doing you know, as a developer for a long, long time, and that's been the cleanest way for me. Um, a lot of the OpenStack manuals uh, talk about uh, Box Grinder and Oz. Um, and there's a lot of pointers from the OpenStack manuals. I have not had any success getting those running, and I haven't seen any commits on that for a couple of years, so I, I don't know if that's uh, alive or dead. Um, but, you know, why not just use Vagrant? Let's talk about uh, the control side of the problem. Um, Ansible and, and SaltStack are, are Python-based configuration management and orchestration class, versus, you know, your puppet and chef are doing configuration management and leaving uh, orchestration, um, you know, for another tool in a tool chain. These guys collapse it. Um, that's got a lot of adoption in the OpenStack space that I've been seeing, um, and I think it's a lot of affinity to the Python, Python language. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, both those guys are here this week. Um, OpenStack Heat is gaining a lot of traction. It's heavily used by Triple O. Um, I've also seen um, Ac Activity, Fabric, and Rundeck. Uh, I use a lot of Rundeck, by the way. Um, Scalar and Tusker projects are uh, um, providing the scale, elastic scale, and a management console. Um, folks who are doing load across, um, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm doing mostly open source tools, not the commercial side. Now, what I've, I've figured about for this speech was that we would do uh, just the open source side, mainly because the open source guys don't tend to, tend to have marketing departments. Um, the scaler adds cl uh, cloud abstraction. So you can you know, host part of your load on, say, AWS and OpenStack. Um, on the release side, release automation side, all the normal kind of tool chains apply. Um, you, you've been seeing you know, outside of the OpenStack space, um, Jenkins and JCloud are really heavily used for OpenStack. So you plug in the uh, JCloud, plug into Jenkins, and JCloud can attach to uh, OpenStack, because that's one of the plugins they use. And almost everybody's using this. So if you're setting up a, a CI loop, um, that's pretty much a standard thing that everyone's doing. You can do continuous integration. You can do continuous delivery. Now, Triple O, I've listed more here as a lifecycle tool in release automation, not as provisioner. Um, a lot of people have been talking about Triple O as provisioning. I see it more as, as a lifecycle tool. Let's talk about life cycles. When you're setting up a tool chain, um, and I do this a lot, I've been doing it for years, um, this is how I see the problem. Um, what we've been seeing is that the tool chain development has been happening for application development. And with you know, the onset of uh, automated configuration managed, we're also seeing you know, the configuration as code type of you know, motto is applied that you know, if your infrastructure is code, why doesn't it follow software devel uh, development lifecycle as well? And the question is, do you develop a separate tool chain or a, t a tool chain leveraging or borrowing from the software world? It depends on the, on the client, depends on the particulars of the deployment. But we do start seeing the introduction of package repositories for configuration. So you'll develop your code. Um, there's been a lot of focus in configuration management on unit testing of your configuration. And you can release it and put it in a package repository. It's very lean that you do an intermittent staged release of an artifact. And then people who are doing deployment can pull those latest versions and set up an environment, test it, and propagate that into a release. So when typically when I'm talking to a client, I go through their software development lifecycle and figure out what they're doing in each one of these stages, right? What are they doing for uh, development? What are they doing for source repositories? How are, they, how are they running their build, right? What package management systems are they using? 
and staging all those tools up. Are they really, are they doing push or are they doing pull? Some people do a uh, release and they want to push it right out to production. I think the more sophisticated shops stage it in a package repository and pull it out. When you get over on the right side of it, uh, deployment consoles, you're looking at something like a scaler or a run deck that will essentially orchestrate the delivery of, of, the, uh, of the artifacts into the production across the, the distributed systems in the proper sequence, right? Or you can have a convergent that doesn't need orchestration, right? You're just using Jenkins. The infrastructure manager on the right is OpenStack in this particular case. Now, I talked before that I thought the triple O was a release system, not a, not a provisioner. It's, it's uh, OpenStack on OpenStack. There's been a lot of uh, speeches about it this week. Um, I see it as a, a CI tool, continuously testing your bare metal config. You can create different config uh, configuration versions um, with OpenStack and, and virtualize it, or you can put it on bare metal. If you're doing a role like me, where you're basically trying to try out the latest features of OpenStack and, and determine if it's suitable for a client or not, you're chasing trunk. And you, the best way to get some sanity in that process is set up a test environment, have it run through the latest config, and give you a green light, a red light, that tells you where you are. Are you deployable or are you not deployable? Anytime you have that information, you have better control over your infrastructure. Yet the, on, the, on the negative side of Triple O, a lot of people have been accusing the Triple O project of DevOps unicorns, right? Some of the, the best practices of DevOps is reprovision instead of repair. If you have a problem with a server, don't try to fix the server, delete it and reprovision it, right? All your artifacts, all your systems have a recipe-driven uh, configuration that can recreate itself. Why sit there and debug it? If there's a problem with it, you're treating it like a, like a cattle, not pets, is another one of the things. The problem is, is that we talk about DevOps and it just, it's, it's rosy, unicorn, we got all the CI and CD stuff, but is it, is it practical? And some kind of times it isn't. So this, is, this was the slide that uh, uh, Robert Collins gave about a year ago, it, when he went over triple O. And it has the life cycle, so, you know, in, it, as, as a design, it's a life cycle tool to basically, you know, on the top left, keep track of the current changes in the configuration and the code of OpenStack stage an environment and run the tests. That gives you your state, where you are. Are you in a deployable state or a not deployable state? This is the information you gotta have. Yes, it does provisioning, but this is a much more complicated life cycle than provisioning. Kind of the standard slide in, in continuous delivery that you see is we have some code, we pull it out, did the build succeed or not? Well, that's feedback. The build didn't succeed. You're not in a deployable state. Okay, we actually built it, have a new version. Can we actually create an environment with it and run the test? More information. Where am I in the life cycle? Right? All the tools that are lining up, there can be failure in any one of those tools. At some point, you've got to get all those tools to line up so you can get into a deployable state. Triple O does that. So if it gives you the information you need, it's getting out of the space of a unicorn, and it's getting into a best practice in DevOps. Uh, let's talk about testing. Uh, OpenStack uh, Tempest is kind of the standard approach to uh, um, certifying that you're uh, in a deployable state. Um, it's an open source project. Um, it would be, uh, I consider it best practice to get it working on your internal environment, your pre-production cloud. Uh, Bunch and Lettuce are uh, sim very similar to Cucumber. I'm, I'm language agnostic. Cucumber was kind of the standard uh, behavior-driven uh, development uh, testing tool. I mean, I, I don't care whether you know, Lettuce is written in Python or Cucumber is written in Ruby. I think you should pick one and use it. You're doing a project, you should describe what the behavior is, use a tool like Cucumber to put that in and make it runnable. Instead of writing you know, a, a specification, why not write a test? You can do it with those tools. I do like the goals of Triple uh, O being a lifecycle automation system. It tells you, it gives you information about where you are in the process. 
Um, let's move on to monitoring. Uh, the usual suspects I've been seeing in, in monitoring. Um, you know, people have been using Zabbix, Xenos, Cacti, Zinca, Open R uh, QRM. Um, on log management, I see a lot of people doing log stash and logly. Um, if you're not using Splunk, um, Splunk being commercial, I've been mainly talking about open source tools. Uh, the new kit is, is something that uh, we released, Selenia, which is Goldstone. It's similar to Logstash and Logly, but it's focused on OpenStack. So it aggregates all your logs um, inside your OpenStack deployment and puts Elasticsearch so you can start correlating events in your, your running uh, cloud. Hey, this isn't just about operations. Um, devs, there's lots of tools for devs in, in the cloud space. Uh, Ruby developers have been using uh, Fog and Aviator. Uh, Aviator being a little newer. Uh, Mark Maglana, he's probably around here somewhere. He wrote that. Um, JClouds and, and Cloud Foundry um, are the standard tools that I've been seeing um, in the Java space. In Python, you have a lot of choices. PyCloud, LiveCloud, OpenStack itself, if you just want to go you know, you know, native. Um, you can use all the OpenStack libraries, um, you know, whatever language you want. I mean, I've done a lot of work with Bash, you know, and Rerun. Um, that works just fine, too. Um, moving up the stack, um, platform as a service. I actually don't run into a lot of this with the work I do. Um, usually when I work with a client, they're pretty settled on, on their platform. They've be developed a platform for their business. They're, they're, they know how to run it. They want to get it on OpenStack. Um, but these are the more generic uh, tools to run you know, Ruby code in your OpenStack environment, you know, kind of similar to you know, any of the, the PaaS providers out there on the net. Um, there's four projects I've run into, uh, Trove, Solum, Cloud Foundry, OpenShift. Um, but I actually haven't had any uh, keyboard time on any of these uh, tools. Um, I'm a nervous speaker. I uh, spent about, uh, I, bl I blew through this quite quickly. Uh, so um, what I'm gonna probably do is we'll, we'll talk about questions. I like to do this where I can get some feedback on, hey, what are you guys doing? Maybe we can do that in here and then move on outside. Um, but I will uh, end with uh, the super user metaphor, right? I think as, what I'm trying to do is share different approaches to doing cloud and uh, this is my superhero. The dude. So uh, thanks very much. That was, that was it for me. Any questions? And we got two microphones here. Anybody want to share what they've been up to? Right, we, got, we got a victim. No, I just have a quick question about the build tool slide that you had early on in your presentation. OK. Um, I was involved in some work um, with Windows guests a ah, time back. Great. OK. Just a just a question, do those tools apply? Could you speak to hosting and, and doing build of Windows guests? I actually, um, two years ago, I, I was involved in, I, most of the year was on Windows guests. Um, and I did a lot of uh, WinRM. So I was running Rundeck on, um, on a Linux node with Java, and it was dispatching over WinRM and orchestrating through PowerShell. I actually loved it, um, having, you know, been, in several projects that had Windows, and it was very, very, very difficult to do anything with the Windows node. Now that I have a good shell environment, um, I found PowerShell to be um, very, very similar to Rerun, which I use a lot on the Bash side. Um, the, the one thing that's kind of weird about PowerShell is it's um, uh, verb noun versus noun verb. So when, when you get into a large distributed system, that has maybe 1,500 endpoints end in computing, you know you're working on, say, a load balancer. So you want to say load balancer fail, or load balancer update, or load balancer uh, install. It's in, in PowerShell, it's reverse. It's like install load balancer. And so, but otherwise, I think it's a, it's a great approach. Um, it makes your, your endpoints cooperate very well with your Unix nodes, especially if the application can talk REST or HTTP. But yeah, that's a great question. Um, I have had really uh, nothing but good experiences in the last two years doing uh, Windows and mixed environments. Great question. 
Any other qu questions? So does everyone develop, uh, go to DevOps days and, and uh, do that kind of uh, community work? No? I, I do a lot of the DevOps stuff in Austin. Go ahead. Yeah, quick question. Uh, the slide where you were looking at the Symantec Bake Off for the, uh, the tool, there you go. Are there other examples of those types of Bake Offs that we can get our hands on so we can kind of see what other experiences uh, are out there? Yeah. We go through it ourselves. Yeah, great question. Yeah, there's, our, there's a ton of this. I mean, they're filming this, this presentation today. Um, I think this community has been very open about uh, what works and what do doesn't work. Um, I found this on the OpenStack. I didn't go to Hong Kong, but I, I found this from the, the Hong Kong videos. Um, I, 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 I love this presentation. These guys did a great job. Very thorough. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to uh, go ahead and yield the stage. And uh, if anyone wants to catch me, I'll, uh, I'll be just outside the door there. Thanks very much.